It's a Sunday It's Sunday It's Sunday It's Sunday From everything fun and crazy Anything cool and tech Something unlikely and something exciting It's a new day It's a Sunday What's up guys, Tekshan here back with part 6 of our PC PCs. A good usable PC for the common man. For everyday use, casual office work, elders or for students who can't afford much. This build is gonna be very helpful. But 8500 seems like a super tight budget, Shan. Hey wait, I know, it's a Raspberry Pi, right? Nah, it's a full PC build. Wow, that's cool. You guys are gonna love it. Sit back and enjoy and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next amazing episode. I hope you guys will do it. All right. Let's get started with the components I've chosen for this build. Every component is chosen with care, balancing both quality and pricing to be in line with our extremely super tight budget. For the processor, I have gone ahead with the Core i3 third generation 3220 dual core chip. It has a clock speed of 3.3 GHz and comes with Intel HD 2500 graphics. This chip should be good for our purpose. Do note you get these STA chips in the market these days in OEM style, that is, it does not come with an official box. With this, I also grabbed a Foxconn cooler fan. Next up, for the motherboard. My choice is the Maxonic H61 board. This model supports the LGA 1155 socket which our processor needs. A good board on a budget. In the box you also have the IO backplate, one SATA cable and a driver CD. Here is a closer look at the motherboard. You have the processor socket here. Then you have two DDR3 RAM slots with max support of 16 GB. Then a PCI Express slot for graphics card if you need to add one in the future. Then four SATA ports for hard disk, SSD, whatever. To the back the connectivity ports, two USB 2 ports, one VGA port, one HDMI port, again four USB 2 ports, then an Ethernet port for wired internet and the audio port for your speaker and mic. Next up would be RAM. I have picked up one stick of Samsung 4GB DDR3 RAM. Speed would be 1600 MHz. Next would be the storage. Since I want the system to be fast instead of a mechanical drive, I picked up a 120GB Geonix SSD. So windows and applications will load and work much faster. SSD is a must to make sure your system works faster. But if you can increase your budget, you can always add additional normal hard disks when you need them. But to start with, this should be okay. Next, power supply unit. Since this build is a basic entry level one, I picked up the Zebion Eco 2. Though it says 450 watts max output, what you get is around 250 watts. Still should be good enough for our build. And the final one would be the cabinet. My pick is the one from Coconut, called the Willow. It's a basic entry level cabinet. Metal and plastic build looks good. Do note you don't get any fans in this. So you can either get a normal 120mm fan like this and fix it in the side plate for ventilation or you can even choose an RGB fan for a little higher price. For demo, I'll be using the RGB fan but to be within the budget, choose a normal fan which costs around Rs 100. To the front, you have the controls. Power on off, reset switch, LED indicators for your hard disk and power, one USB 2 port, audio ports and another USB 2 port. A decent good looking basic cabinet that fits in our budget. Alright, now that you know about the components, it's time to get started with the build. Just follow my exclusive EC10 step process and you can build it yourself easily. Step 1. On the motherboard, open the processor socket. Then follow the direction where the arrow is pointed and place the processor carefully. Lock it in place. Step 2. Let's fix the cooler fan on top. If your fan does not have a thermal paste pre-installed, then you need to add some. If it does, then no need. In my case, it is not, so I'll be adding a bit of paste. Then fix the fan and lock it in place. Step 3. Get the cabinet ready. Remove the side plates. Keep the screws ready that came with it. Step 4. Fix the additional 120mm fan to the side plate of the cabinet. As said, normal or RGB fan. Depends on your budget. Step 5. To the back of the cabinet, fix the IO motherboard backplate that you got with the box. Step 6. Now we have to fix the motherboard to the cabinet. Before that, in the screw packet you would see gold connectors like these. Fix them in the slot provided. Just like that. 
Then align the board correctly and using the screws, tighten it well in place. Step 7. Let's fix the SSD hard disk in its slot. Step 8. Now fix the power supply unit in place and tighten it using the screws. Step 9. Let's fix the RAM card in its slot. Step 10. Now that we have all the components in place, it's time to connect all the cables including the cabinet front top connector cables. All markings are on the board. Still, follow me as I connect them. Guys, like I always say, make sure all possible cables are routed from the back, so it's a bit neat. CPU cooler fan cable goes here. The main big power cable goes here. Small one here. Take one SATA cable that you got in the motherboard box and connect one end to the SATA port of the board and the other end to the drive. And from the PSU, take a SATA power cable and connect it here. Moving on, now let's connect the cabinet top connector cables. USB 2 cable goes here. Audio cable goes here. Front switches etc goes here. Good thing is it's all color coded. Just make sure the plus and minus part. Now connect the side plate fan cable to one of the power cables from the PSU. Close the side plate and finally we are done with the build. Boomba, here is the PC setup on my desk. For demo, I am using a 15 inch Frontec monitor. Do note, you get entry level monitors in the offline market for around Rs 2500. So if you don't have a spare or old monitor, you can get it for as low as 2500. Ok, now many were asking me how to install Windows after a build. So here it is again. First, from a different computer, maybe your friends or your laptop or browsing center, whatever, go to the link that flashes on the screen. Second, download the installation media creation tool. Third, insert a minimum 8GB pendrive in the USB slot and open the creation tool and follow the on-screen instructions. Make sure to select the pendrive to be changed to bootable. Fourth, wait until Windows gets downloaded to the pendrive and the pendrive is changed to bootable. Fifth, once done, insert the pendrive in the newly built PC. Restart and select the pendrive and you can see the Windows installation screen pop up. Follow on-screen instructions and install Windows to the SSD. Do note you need a Windows 10 license key to activate. You can grab an OEM license from a reliable site for cheap. Many will ask me, Sean, how about Windows 11? Well, not officially, as the requirements are high for Windows 11. Do note, Windows 11 is just out and even on some high-end specs, it is a bit sluggish. Windows 10 is still good and has support till 2025. So what more do you want? Finally, we are all set and the build is alive with Windows 10 installed. All the drivers will automatically be installed once you connect to internet. Or you can also manually do it. Guys, the objective of this build is for a good, ultra low budget PC, for everyday casual use and mainly for students, for their educational needs or even teachers for taking online classes. Not everyone can afford a high end computer or laptop. This is for them and trust me, you'll be more than happy. As far as this build is concerned, I want you to keep three things in mind. First, on the upgrade factor, yes, you can upgrade your hard disk, RAM, even add a second hand graphic card with more RAM to do casual gaming on this. I mean, STA games can also be played on medium to low settings with more RAM and a graphic card. Second, these parts I bought from a local store and here is the price chart for your reference. Usually computer spares are much cheaper locally. This video is your components guide on what to ask them. Online pricing might be totally different, plus or minus, so make sure to check with your local dealer first. And the third, this build is not for hand work or gaming, but for everyday browsing, email, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, video watching, online video calls, online classes, basic level games from the Windows Store, you can use it with no issues. Pair it with the basic HD monitor, keyboard and mouse and you should be good. If you have a super low budget and want a computer for yourself, kids, elders, then you can definitely consider this configuration. Just imagine this guys, for the price of a basic smartphone, you can build a PC. 
How cool is that? So that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in another exciting video. Until then.